Hey everybody, welcome back to another Skiff Smasher Showcase. I am Wonderful <laughs> Skiff, and today I'm here with a fellow Ensign main, MRW. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for having me on. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good. So uh, we're going to get right into this, it's uh, the typical stuff. I knew you used the default, so I switched to the mac and cheese variant. <laughs> <laughs> Garfield comes out to play once in a while. Ah, uh, dude, this is actually the skin I used to uh, run with before I actually went to default myself. I don't know, it's just something about the default is just fantastic. So anyway, yeah, first things... I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good, you're good. Alright, so anyway, you're first good. things first, uh... <laughs> where's, where's the tag come from? The tag is actually my uh, initials. I've had it since Smash 4 because I wasn't really... Creative when I went to the one or two tournaments I did during Smash 4, back when I played uh, Falco, who was also considered a low tier character. I don't know what's with me in the low tiers, but the tag is based on my initials, and I've kind of just stuck with it. People are like, oh, it's Mr. W, like Mr. E or Mr. R, and <laughs> no, you say it one letter at a time, and um, it doesn't really bug me that much, because people have thought of like creative nicknames for it, like um, dubs, or MR dubs, Mr. Mm -hmm. W, and I just kind of learned a little bit. Yeah, it kind of works out that way. I mean, that's kind of what happens. So I guess, uh, <laughs> like, uh, wait, we have a um, we have a Shulk main up in uh, North Dakota who just goes by LC, and he gets asked all the time, like, "Hey, what does it stand for?" And every time he gets asked, what he does in our local Discord is he adds another number after LC. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty good. I, I enjoy him very much. He's, he's a pretty good so dude. So what's he at, like 100 something? Uh, 60 something right now. It's been Not a while bad. since, uh, you know, uh, offline hasn't been a thing, so. Yeah, unfortunately. Alright, so anyway, moving on from there, though. So let's go over some of your recent results. Like, I know you've been a bit inactive, and uh, I think there was a couple times mm -hmm. where uh, you were just like, I'm done with Wi Fi, which is a normal reaction, I think, for <laughs> yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> um, but uh, you've, you've come back a little bit, and you're doing some things here and there. So what are some recent results that you think uh, you, you're really proud of? Um, I honestly haven't done much in the last two to three months. The most recent would have been, I believe, last week. I did the collision bracket. I was seated in the, like, 120-ish area out of, like, 256. Um, and I had to play Mr. E round two. I ended up winning that 2-0. Bot is on his stream. Um... But other than that, there hasn't really been much. I have had some decent Wi-Fi results before quarantine. I got 129th at Glitch 8, and um, I also got 33rd at the Glitch and Frostbite pre-tournaments out of about maybe 250. Okay. So I've only been playing this game for about a year, but I would say those are some of my better results, including also uh, 9th at Crisis Core and... Um, the Northeast Army tournaments back in June, I believe those were. Okay. I had ninth in both of those. I have about 600, 700. Sick. Yeah. No, so uh, for Jesse, you've been playing the game for about a year? Yeah, I've been playing since launch, but before that, I really didn't take much to Smash 4. So I learned everything through Ultimate. I used to play with a friend at college when he went to the same school as me. Mm -hmm. We grinded the game intensively together, found out about local tournaments. And he put down the game and went towards other things like League of Legends, and I decided to stick more with the game, and I ended up seeing more and more results locally, and then uh, took it off from there. Nice, nice. So, so I mean, for such a little time, you've been doing pretty well, because you're also uh, PR'd in your region as well, right? I believe it's Buffalo? Yeah, 6th in Buffalo, started at 10th in uh, last summer, I think that came out in... July or something, mm -hmm. and then it went to this PR wasn't really released much, but for the end of 2019 I was put at 5th, because I had a lot of strong out of region results but then we had a new uh, player step in, I dropped 1, oh, oh thanks for the save by the way thank you for the save <laughs> I wanted to so, the clothesline yeah. <laughs> uh, as of now I sit at 6th and I look to just get better from there, maybe take down the top 2 in my region and some more in the uh, upstate New York region as well. <laughs> yeah, so uh, sounds like you made a pretty good run so far. Don't you guys also have like a lot of Bowsers too? <laughs> yeah, we're we're a region that's really under uh, seen. And um, the one thing you want to know about Buffalo is if you come here, you need to know the Bowser measure. If you don't, <laughs> you are going to go two two or, or less in bracket. Um, we have, I think the names are Walkin, Flip Flop. 
Zambo, um, Big Swindu, Couch, and um, Sabacito, and there's at least people with pocket Bowsers as well. I want to say we have at least seven Bowser players who are capable of um, taking some uh, good sets locally. And um, funny enough, out of all the heavy characters, I'm actually the highest ranked of them. No disrespect to the Bowser mains, I love them to death. <laughs> but the cat is better than the turtle. Uh, at least in Buffalo, not like, <laughs> not like no, on the tier. No, no, the tier is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I guess it makes sense, though, that you would be better than most of the Bowsers, considering you have to play them all the time, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, that matchup is just engraved in my head. And I love it. I love all those guys, and uh, having the heavy duels every week with them is a lot of fun, and um, they're really great to be around. That's good. That's good. It's always good to have a have a good welcoming scene, but it's it's just so weird. Cause like I remember I saw you guys PR list, and there's just what there's, there's ten on your PR. Yeah, ten and the and the three are Bowsers. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just Bowser. Yeah. And um, I feel like once quarantine ends, we're gonna see a lot of speed because um, I know at least. Three of those people in the PR, including myself, have been picking up Steve as well. All right, all right, good stuff, good stuff. I mean, I guess, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know. It gets a little, a little bit colder up there, and uh, you know, big bodies tend to stay warmer. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see who survives the rumbles and the tundras when we are coming back to offline. Right, that should be a good time, though. So, moving right. on from there. Um, you went over like your kind of uh, you know, your brief history with Smash in general, not just yeah. Ultimate. Uh, but is there any mm -hmm. moments that really stick out to you so far? So far, the biggest one was um, getting voted for the Glitch 8 Compendium. And uh, I was absolutely shocked to uh, uh, win that. I actually, the way I did that, I found out during Smash Club, um, like when the news dropped like that, I was accepted to be voted uh, it was at our Smash Club meeting. So that got me a good start to the votes. I think I had like maybe four or 500 at the end of the first night because everyone there was spreading to their friends and their families and it was going really well from there the next two days i went on my campus and walked around to the uh like the student commons area and um in my classes i promoted it which got me a lot of votes and because i have such i'm in such a large school i was ending up i think i ended up with maybe 1800 votes or so and i ended up uh coming out on top of that that really stuck out to me because I realized then that people really uh, did care about me and wanted me to succeed more outside my region and um, it was a lot uh, to take in. People were being really nice to me and I just can't thank them enough for helping me with that. And then the tournament itself was an experience of a lifetime, not just because I won that, I was still going to go anyways, but that was, um, I would say, the moment that sticks out to me the most is People locally and then from other regions like Ontario, Rochester, Syracuse, um, Erie, downstate New York, they all pitched in, helped me out, and uh, I can't give them up. Thanks to them, and um, I can't wait to see them and um, treat them with the same respect that they gave me when points is over. It's good stuff. It's always like, it's always good to have a real supportive scene, like like we mentioned before, and uh, just kind of seeing so many people kind of chip in for that. It, you know, it just makes you feel like, hey, you know what? I'm doing something here at least. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think our scene is very supportive of each other, and um, everyone here has been great to me, and I just want to continue to be great to them as a player, a TO, and a friend. And um, I can't thank them enough for. Uh, what they've done and they are the reason i enjoy this game so much for sure for sure so moving on from there uh let's talk about your game playing style so far so obviously you're playing in Cinderor, so we automatically i don't know why i actually revenge there. i didn't want to do that yeah uh, lucky it just happens <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like obviously we're playing in Cinderor, right? We have to work harder than anybody else in Smash Bros. It's it's just a matter of the fact. <laughs> like, so uh, when you're much. playing <laughs> when you're playing in Cinderor, uh, like what are, what are you trying to do? Like what are your goals in a game? And uh, you know and like how how do you try to incorporate your style through that? So despite this character being slow as molasses and hitting like a truck, I really want I like to play him kind of fast paced, in your face type style. He's got some great normal attacks, amazing specials. His kit flows really well together in my hands, I feel. And um, it's interesting 
how I like to see how people will react to like what I'm doing, how I'm approaching, um, how I'm gonna like not let them try to camp me out of projectiles. Maybe I'll just like I'll pick a moment to go in when they're throwing a projectile and they'll take 70 for it, and then I just try to play and install a fear factor into them with how I get in their face, box them in corners, and um, like kind of like that. Like I'm like trying to force a few options there mm -hmm. and um, got what I one there but try to force them and make them scared of my character despite the uh, lack of speed and recovery because I feel like yeah that's all he has and it's a big glaring weakness but it's something I feel I can overcome with this character and there are some matchups that are troubling but I feel I just want to keep my foot on the gas most of the time stay in their face and um, really just show them that I want to control the stage you have to make the first you have to make the second move because I'm going to pressure you to do something first. Right. I think that's definitely a good way to, to see it. Um I've definitely changed up minds in our style, like throughout time and stuff like that. Cause I used to just be like balls to the wall aggressive and then I found out like, you know what? Sometimes it's just better to play a more bait and punish style, but you gotta have like a lead to do that. <laughs> and it's it's rough. <laughs> oh absolutely, yeah. Just like that upbeat having sixty frames of landing light. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, with a lot of his moves do leave some big openings. So there is times you want to stay back and play patient, but then your opponent just won't approach you either. Yeah. Your opponent's going into the game knowing, I don't want to interact with this dude. He is going to hurt me and then kill me at, like, 45%, and I don't want to interact with that. But right. I will force you to do that because I might just take a quick stock of a down throw down here at zero at ledge and you'll just be like wait what the heck i'm done a stock now i have to get in his face wait he's revenging and getting me off him oh what i forgot to turn the stage oh, off oh no <laughs> you know what play it out play it out all Sweet. right you know it's not you like we're, we're competing for money or anything like that <laughs> no god no so anyway <laughs> yeah uh no it's definitely it's definitely a struggle playing instant sometimes um <laughs> Especially the way that some characters can just like pretty much uh, make this character like completely useless sometimes. Yeah, there's moments where it's just like discouraging to play this character because I know the map is really hard and tough to figure out, and I don't want to sometimes even grind the matchup because it's so demotivating at times. And that's why I've been tantalizing with Steve and Wolf and Nice Spike and the. Oh, you live. Oh, I thought you were going to die. Um, I've been t touching characters like Steve and Wolf to pick up. For other matchups, and um, well, I don't really pull them out in brackets very much, and I'm still probably only gonna play this character. Um, there are matchups where it's just like, yeah, I don't want to play the game anymore. You, you want the character select screen, and then <laughs> I feel that way even more so online than offline. There's, there's more counterplay to offline than online, but right, that's, right, right. Um, a hot take in my opinion. No, I, I think you're definitely uh, fair with that, though. I mean, uh, cause like, I think a lot of people try to say that like, Instant's buffed online, and it's like, no dude, he still has all the same struggles, and some of them are magnified depending on the matchup. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think, I think a lot have, of people don't um, understand that. <laughs> no, they don't, and um, they don't understand that um, side B, right, it's not automatic like you'll see offline. You'll see people like Magister and Sharpie, they'll hit every side B 100% of the time where they want the 25% the Lariat, mm -hmm. but with any delay of lag, and um, any form of change in connection or an inconsistency or them not having land far distance, anything like that will influence the timing. And you have to adjust to that for the whole game. And even that can still be random lag and you have to adjust that. I can't tell you the amount of games I've lost because um, I'll hit a side via last stop situation and it'll end up just not working because um, of lag. There's only a five frame window for it, and people um, discredit that a lot because, oh, it's hard to react to. Yeah, point blank, yes, you're right. But when am I gonna use that move point blank? I just use my regular grab. Ah, you got it. <laughs> no, that's, uh, I uh, enough range. <laughs> no, that's the thing I try to tell people about side view as well, uh, talking about not having enough range. It's like, <laughs> for any people, they, they are they're always confused about how I'm able to grab them. And it's like, if you think you're just out of range, you're not. <laughs> that's that's what I, I try to tell that's people. A good, that's a very good philosophy to have. <laughs> like, cause there's there's is you're just better off just completely spacing it out with not having a real hard punish, than uh, trying to micro space it and then not getting a punish at all. But uh, yeah, 
you just get grabbed at the end of the thing and you're just like, huh, oh, that actually worked? And then you learn, okay, I have to respect this move more, and then you'll respect it too much and not get the punish that you want later, and you'll die for it. Right. So anyway, um, going from there, we talked about your style and, uh, you know, what your game plan is and stuff like that. But I think another more interesting thing, and we, and we kind of touched upon it, but what do you think your personal weaknesses are with this character? Not just this character, but like you as a player in general. Sometimes I think I am stubborn. I, mean, I was talking about earlier with um, matchups. There's just matchups I would just not want to play the game. Um, like Inkling, Mega Man, Young Link, Sonic. Uh, those characters sometimes I just don't even want to play the game and people can just kind of pick those characters and win and it's just not fair and not fun, um, especially on Wi-Fi. Um, I also will go for a lot of offstage plays. I noticed from the past, especially, I've been trying to cut that down. And I'll do the offstage play, like go for a runoff fair, runoff there, and then die for it because I wasted a double jump or an up and I'll get caught by something I didn't want to. And I'll die for it. I feel like I can lose stocks way too early with this character and need to establish more like stage control and um, not give up the stage as easy. When I'm staying grounded, I feel I play at my best. Not jumping around the air, getting called out for that, not going on stage for risky plays all the time. Right. Um, I would say those are the two big things, because they go with my character, kind of. If you make a bad mistake off stage, you can't make it back because you don't have a recovery. And if you're playing someone with safe moves and projectiles that can overwhelm you, then you're just going to die for that, too, and take a lot of percent. No, I think those are all fair points. Whoa! <laughs> But I think, uh, I think honestly, I think one thing that a lot of people don't really do in Incineroar enough is uh, I think he's actually got a really solid ledge trapping game that people don't um, absolutely don't actually utilize enough or don't actually talk about enough, to be honest. No, they don't. With moves like Down Tilt that are excellent for two-framing and uh, not fully safe on shield, but they're relatively safe moves to throw out at ledge. Um, they can catch and then Down Tilt can lead to a plethora of follow-ups, which will send you either off stage again or kill you. Like down tilt, F tilt, if it two frames, you'll die at like 60. Say your Joker or Ascend, that's something you can do. If, that's one thing I like practice is the timing on uh, Joker or Ascend recovery or a pit recovery. Um, he's got runoff Lariat, runoff Fair, runoff Nair, very active moves that will stuff out recoveries. And um, he can even run off Revenge to stop people like Donkey Kong yeah. or Bowser from recovering. And then down there being a Falcon Stomp instead of just at the feet um, works very well for him. And that was probably one of the best things they've done for him is give him a proper down to use. Oh, I thought I was at the end of that. Uh-oh, this hurts. Yeah, that's like, what, 70 right there? Something I like think that. that's just death. I think that's death. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's death. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Winston. You'll love to see it. The dude is a lot of fun. You get to make some cool edge guarding plays, but it's also scary. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, uh, cause you can make like <laughs> some aggressive plays, and it's like, yo, this was awesome. But you like <laughs> you mess it up once, and it that's that's a stock. It's not awesome anymore. Agreed. But uh, so. Yeah, we went over a bunch of things. Um, obviously, we went over your strengths, your weaknesses, uh, you know, results and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, let's kind of get into maybe you more as a person or just kind of like what your interests lie. Um, oh, I probably could have recovered. I had to scratch my nose. Mm. I thought I was dead. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so uh, what, what's something that you might want to bring to the table or talk about? Um, I guess as a person, besides Smash, I really like sports. Um, I'm a huge Buffalo Bills fan. And for hockey, I like the Winnipeg Jets. I don't really like the uh, the Sabres, the uh, Buffalo team, very much. I don't want to get too into it because I don't think a lot of Smashers will understand sports, and that's okay. Um, I don't think I'm like the typical um, Smash player sometimes. I feel like I, I came from something different. I didn't really grow up with the game like a lot of players have. Right. Yeah, you're not like most girls. Interests. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm... Yeah, you know, I'm not the, the dude who grew up with G.I. Joe and then Call of Duty or something like that. You know, I grew up watching sports and um, that was kind of the thing I um, go to besides Smash. You know, a lot of um, people I talk to, like, they'll talk about anime at, like, the Denny's table after the local. And I'm just like, 
You know, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go on Twitter and just be like, uh, I don't know what Attack on Titan is or something like that. Right, right, right. Because uh, that's something a lot of people gravitate towards, and I'm uh, just not. I respect it, but it's not for me. And um, I feel like even though I have some maybe differences as a person, it's not anything like bad. And um, I like the community a lot. And um, I guess I also, I like to um, just like go out and socialize and do um, outdoor things. Um, I also acted in high school. Um, I bowled for four years in high school as well. Um, yeah, I guess me as a person, most of it is like Smash and school and maybe some other games and sports. That's, I guess, pretty much me as a person. So in high school, what plays were you in? Um, so I didn't start till junior year because I thought um, acting was lame at first, and then I did um, like stage crew, and I was like, all right, this seems kind of fun. So then I joined the drama club. I did a, uh, I did this um, Irish version of Beauty and the Beast where they have like fairies and, and rascals and stuff like that from like the 14, 1500s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also did. Uh, Oh, whoops. <laughs> um, I said, I, I said Beauty and the Beast, right? And then Alice in Wonderland or something. Yeah, yeah, Alice in Wonderland was the other one I did. Um, they were fun, and um, it was interesting to be a part of that. Because um, it was like, I wasn't the typical person. Everyone says that all the time. It's like, this guy really came from being a bowler and a sports guy, nice, etc. Um... This guy really came from doing sports and all that stuff to come into act with us, you know. And it's like people accepted that. I'm really glad that I'm in that accepting community there and uh, Smash community as well, kind of uh, accepting me and stuff like that as well. I'm glad that that's a thing in the community. Nice lariat. Uh, yeah. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. Because like, I only did uh, theater uh, my freshman year. It was mostly because my, my sister was a senior at the time, and she, that was, like, her thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll do a play. And it sounds like your plays were a lot more fun. We did The Crucible. Uh, that was boring. What? Yeah, The Crucible mm -hmm. was boring. Salem Never Witch Trials? That. It's about the Salem Witch oh, Trials. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, that was a great time. Everybody had so much fun on that one. And then after that, I just didn't do it anymore. It's not because I hate theater or anything. It's just, like, I, it was, like... The way the director was like, acting too, I was like, I don't want to be part mm -hmm. of this program. <laughs> yeah. I feel if you surround yourself with the right people, and that's how I felt with everything I did in high school, like bowling, acting, and um, Smash now. I feel if you surround yourself with the right people, you're going to enjoy um, what you do and want to put more time into it and get better with it. Right, right, right. No, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, that's pretty much applicable to almost anything. As long as you're around the right people, um, you're going to just have a better time with it. And just your interests within the uh, the topic or community will just grow. It's just a matter of how it works. Yeah, before, like, I didn't really um, use social media no much local Smash scene until I started getting results in game PR. And I started to learn more about what's, what, what Smash 4 was like in the region. Um, how people are in the community now. I really wasn't too um, knowing of who they were as people. I just really knew them as players, and I'm really glad I got to know those people as people as well, and more than just players holding a controller. Um, and they found the same out about me, and yeah. Good stuff. Um, hmm. Not sure what's going from this. Uh, do you watch basketball? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I actually prefer college basketball over the NBA, but watching the NBA bubble was um, a lot of fun. I really don't have an NBA team as Buffalo doesn't have a team. Uh, what are you talking about? You're not a Knicks I, fan? <laughs> no. Oh, God, no. Well, I will never support what's James wrong with, Dolan. What's wrong with the Knicks? What are you talking about? <laughs> James Dolan. I that's don't know. I I, that doesn't mean anything. That that means everything. <laughs> He's the worst owner in sports. Um, you can put that in the video. He doesn't. He'll ban me from the Guardian for saying that. I don't care. <laughs>
Oh, I think you're just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did too early. You had the drift more, yeah. Yeah, I, I did it way too early. I, I, I did a little bit of a panic, but you know what? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes shit just happens. Yeah, it was sad to see the uh, college basketball tournament get shut down this year. Yeah, uh, I'm a huge Duke Blue Devils fan. If anything, just because I grew up watching them with my dad, mm -hmm. and um, I just got into them. Uh, I like the how they play, and I like the coach. Um, but the NBA don't really care for one specific team and um i guess for the most part it's been football for me for sports but basketball is a lot of fun to watch i like playing it a lot and um actually like i actually am 6'3 so i actually can play basketball besides being tall i can actually like try to play basketball when i do go out doesn't mean anything <laughs> <laughs> hey saying. man I'll, get, I'll dunk on some of you guys listen i'm i'm 5'8 on a good day all right, <laughs> I was I was captain on my team, starting point guard. Oh, I, never mind. I played I played point. better uh, post defense and offense than any of the big guys on my team. Really? <laughs> I believe it. I'd like to see it. It's mostly because I was be quicker than them, but you know. <laughs> That's fair. Then yeah, I'm just tall and skinny, so it's like yeah, I can do things. Like I you have an easier time of people. getting a rebound for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll get the rebounds. I'll get above people. But I won't, um, what's it called? I won't be like the best guy in the court, I won't the most athletic. But I'll have the height that will just win matchups and get you the ball back. Right. I mean, hey, we need we need those tall people who just know that they're tall and that's that's all they're good for. So, I mean. That's why Taco Fall is in the league. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> you gotta love it, though. You know, you gotta love to see it. No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to love it. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Uh, I we went through the topics pretty fast. Um, and you you honestly uh put a lot more <laughs> effort into some of your questions than some other people have had too. So oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, yeah. Never did anything like this before. I'm really glad that you had me on. Um, good luck with the rest of your project as well. Uh, if you're interested, follow me on Twitter at MRW underscore SSB and my Twitch, uh, MRW underscore Instant. Um, I think you'll link those in like the description or tweet or whatever you put. Yeah, yeah, no, right? I'll definitely get uh, all that information from you. Lovely. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, and then go Funny Cat. Let's get buff in 10.0. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we'll finish out this game at least. Of course, of course. No! No, no you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Not anymore. No. Oh, no a lot of things I'll notice with Insumer, the special attacks are like, they don't kill. The, the kill screen's a lie. That one's not though. <laughs> that one's not. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're all, we'll start wrapping it up here. Uh, Again, if you just want to go ahead and plug everything uh, once more, now we have a quiet screen and not like uh, a bunch of, you know, two grown cats screaming at each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's volume. I've been playing volume up the whole time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if you want to follow me, Twitter is MRW underscore SSB. Twitch is MRW underscore Instant. Uh, I don't really have any other social medias. And, uh, yeah. Yep. Give me a follow. DMs yep. are open. And uh, come play me sometime, guys. For sure, for sure. Uh, yep. So again, that is MRW. Thank you again for coming out. Uh, make sure you check them out on Twitter and Twitch. The links will be in the bio below. And I think that's pretty much all we have to add. Do you have any uh, final words you want to throw out to people? No, thanks for having me. And uh, Instant was... Instant's what? <laughs> you cut out. Instant, bust Instant busted. Trust uh, me. Yeah, okay. Don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that one out. <laughs> uh <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a good day, everybody else. Be good to each other.